Hello everyone, this is my fourth review of Layer Origins Pure HMO Prebiotic Powder and I'm really excited about this video. My pre previous videos have all concentrated on my personal results from doing a meta metagenomic uh, stool tests and then a second one and a third one taking various prebiotic fibers including Pure HMO, uh, but this one it, the results are focusing on my daughter and my wife, and especially in regard to my daughter, I'm excited about it because I had taken, uh, as I said, some prebiotic uh, powders before I even knew what HMO was, and then added HMO, and then got some different and very good results. Uh, but with my daughter, she had not taken any prebiotic powders before going on pure HMO, uh, nor is she on any uh, probiotics whatsoever. So uh, the difference between her first and second test uh, is only the pure HMO. And here's just a quick summary of some of the results I'll, I'll get into in a moment. Uh, she ended up on the 98th percentile on her butyrate producers, 99th percentile on gram positive species. Uh, she had a 29,500% increase in her total bifidobacterium. And then a surprising result that we didn't expect that I'll get to in just a moment. And then my wife, uh, she is in the 99th percentile for acromancia. Uh, and I, I uh, can't grow any acromancia, neither do my daughter, but uh, my wife uh, has an over, uh, an abundance, really an overabundance of it uh, at the moment. So here, uh, first of all, let me review some of my results just for comparison with my daughter's my total bifida first of all you can't see the video is hiding in december 2021 my first test i was on four months of five prebiotic fibers not hmo and you see an increase in bifidobacterium and then eight weeks of pure hmo and had a very solid uh, bifidobacterium result and then more specifically i saw an increase a huge increase in b adolescentis just from the HMO, the prior use of the prebiotic fibers did not touch my adolescentus. So uh, that was a, a really uh, good result from that. So now my daughter's results, and again, are different. The fact that she hadn't taken any prebiotic fibers, so just a pure HMO. Her first test uh, this past February, 41.5% butyrate producers, which puts her uh, about at the average, I think, or the median, and then eight weeks of pure HMO and went all the way up to 67.6% butyrate producers. Again, that's only eight weeks of pure HMO. And uh, that puts her at the 98th percentile of all butyrate, uh, rather of all results uploaded to the Biome website uh, for uh, butyrate producers. Now, interestingly, about six weeks ago, when I did my, uh, uh, last test or when I got looked at my results, um, I was in the 100th percentile at 65% butyrate producers. Well, she just kind of flew past me and we're both sitting together at the 98th percentile. Uh, so it's good to see some other uh, folks uploading to Biome site with even more butyrate than that. Uh, but that's a crazy amount of butyrate. If you're not familiar with butyrate, the uh, butyrate is one of the short chain fatty acids that the colonocytes, which are the epithelial uh, lining of the uh, large intestine and uh, just a single layer of cells that is the, the main protection uh, for your, your whole colon. And that's where uh, you get the leaky gut in that area when the tight junctions are, are, um, have gaps in them. But butyrate feeds the colonocytes, heals the colonocytes, so, so literally helps to heal uh, what we uh, often call a leaky gut. So in, in general, uh, butyrate is, is a very, very good thing. Now, just as a reminder, again, these are from the Biome site website. The Biome site, uh, this butyrate number is not a direct measurement of the amount of butyrate in your uh, large intestine, in your colon. Um, in order to do that, it's a very expensive, clunky, and, and very messy test from what I, I gather. Uh, but rather, the butyrate numbers here are just in addition, uh, just adding together all of the bacteria that are known to produce butyrate. 
um, as one of their byproducts. So they literally just list them all, add them all up, and that's where, uh, in my daughter's case, she gets to 60, greater than 67% of those total butyrate producers. Another really encouraging result is her gram positive uh, numbers, percentage of bacteria versus her gram negative. Before uh, she was in HMO, 62.5% gram positive, which, which again is, is not bad. It's a healthy amount, but an HMO, almost 90% gram positive uh, bacteria in her gut. Now that's important because the gram negative bacteria on their cell wall, they have what's called a lipopolysaccharide or LPS. That is the endotoxin, uh, that when you have a leaky gut, when you have those, uh, uh, tight junctions disrupted intestinal permeability, uh, that endotoxin gets that into your system and can, can cause all manner of havoc, uh, various forms of systemic inflammation. Uh, but those are only the gram negative bacteria. Gram positive bacteria do not have any LPS on their cell wall and therefore uh, cannot produce any endotoxemia. So in theory, the more gram positive bacteria you have in your gut, the less likely you are to have uh, metabolic endotoxemia, leaky gut, and all the inflammation and various uh, even uh, diseases, autoimmune diseases, cancers, diabetes, uh, that, that can go with that. And her uh, result, she, for her gram positive uh, percent, she's at the 99th percentile, which again, I've, I've never seen. Well, no wonder I've never seen a number that high. She said 99th percentile. So uh, uh, again, that was just on uh, HMO. A couple other results, her uh, fecalobacterium, which in this case, it's F. prosnitzi. Prosnitzi is the only uh, species within that genus. Uh, went from about 14% to almost 20% on HMO. So that's a huge increase in that key, key bacteria. And her uh, Roseburia was essentially non-existent, went all the way up to 10%. So that's a large uh, chunk of her butyrate producers uh, right there between those two, a uh, large chunk of their increase. Her bifidobacteria uh, went from almost non-existent to 6%, which is a almost a 30,000% increase, which of course you, you get those huge percentages when you start with almost nothing. And uh, specifically her B. longum uh, was the uh, largest uh, species within bifidobacterium that increased in a 46,000% uh, increase. So just insane numbers. And uh, that, that looks very similar, although even much greater increase from my B. adolescentis when I uh, was on HMO. But uh, this is the only prebiotic fiber that, that she has ever taken. Now, uh, those are some really, really positive results, but my daughter, uh, just after a couple weeks, uh, we were, I think, talking the phone and gave what, what I, what we both did not expect, a surprising result. She said, Dad, um, I have no other explanation. I think the HMO is helping my acne. Now, she uh, volunteered that information. She has given me her full permission to share all of this uh, and I, I thought it was fascinating. So I'm going to show you uh, some before and after photos and then talk about uh, some science underlying uh, some of these results. So here is a bef two before and after uh, shots. And, and uh, these are all makeup free uh, photos. And you see some uh, serious changes there. And I think these were taken after about four weeks of being on HMO. So not even the, not even the full amount. And my daughter reports that, um, uh, she's improved even more and has maintained, uh, that much clearer skin. So is this, uh, just accidental? Is this just another, uh, correlation without causation? Well, um, you know, this is just, I'm just making observations here. Uh, but, um, uh, I did find some, uh, scientific uh, papers uh, to back up um, some of these results, which I think are, is fascinating. So uh, from the uh, journal Gut Pathogens, uh, the quote here is loss of normal microbial, microbial, biofilm, microbial, sorry, biofilm, bifidobacterium in particular, causes intestinal permeability and endotoxins gain systemic access. That's the, the leaky gut we were talking about. 
burden of inflammation and oxidative stress is increased. Substance P is elevated. That's a, a marker of, uh, of inflammation and pain. Insulin sensitivity is decreased due to endotoxemia, which I talked about in great detail in my last video. In those genetically susceptible to acne vulgaris, this cascade increases the likelihood of excess sebum production, exacerbations in acne, and additional psychological stress. So there's some indication that bifidobacterium is uh, lacking uh, when there is uh, more issues with acne. From another uh, journal, a probiotic composed of bifidobacterium lactis, B. longum, and lactobacillus casei administered for 12 weeks was tested observing clinical and statistically significant differences at the end of the intervention period, achieving a reduction in the SCORAD, which is scoring atopic dermatitis, which is essentially the amount of acne you have at any one time, index of 80%. So a reduction of 80% in those uh, that uh, were using probiotics with bifidobacterium, and in this case, especially bifidobacterium longum. And then one more journal, Journal of Dermatology, they found a striking underrepresentation of bifidobacterium and some other others there are found in acne patients. So I will let you determine whether that's correlation or causation, but there is a lot of science uh, to back this up. And my daughter uh, is quite confident uh, based on her, her results. She's very, very happy with those results uh, that the HMO had a definite difference. Regardless, uh, the, the facts speak for themselves. Uh, those results increases in her butyrate produces gram positive um, um, uh, bacteria, uh, et cetera. Oh, I wanted to also mention then one result from my wife, uh, and she is the Acromancia queen here. Um, now she started with 5% Acromancia in her gut. That's before. Uh, I uh, meddled with her gut by, by feeding her uh, prebiotic fibers. For whatever reason, uh, on those five prebiotic fibers, her acromancia went way down. And then uh, on HMO, it went way up. And uh, she is now in the 99th percentile for acromancia. And for those of you that have tried to raise your acromancia, you know how difficult that is. That, that's a lot of acromancia. In fact, um, uh, it's uh, getting a little bit too much. In some regards, uh, I, it, it's beginning to lower some of her butyrate producers. So uh, I'm gonna have her uh, reduce the amount of HMO uh, at this point, but the uh, point is still well taken. If you have acromancia in your gut, HMO is almost certain to increase it. And I think uh, the, the, the wisdom, the general wisdom is that if you have none to extreme uh, low amount as I do and my daughter does, that uh, HMO may not be able to raise that. So it's a sort of a, sort of a tricky uh, bacteria. It does not seem to uh, respond like uh, the bifidobacterium and the, the F. prasnitsi does. So just in summary then, my daughter's results, 98th percentile on butyrate produces, 99th percentile in gram-positive species, 29,000 percent increase in total bifidobacterium, and then that surprise result with great improvement in her, her acne, which is only in, uh, improved since then and maintained. And then my wife is in the 99th percentile for acromancia. And uh, all of that is due to uh, layer, layer origins, pure HMO prebiotic powder. So I hope that is uh, helpful uh, uh, for you today. Thanks so much.